Right, hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hadnot and I am going to teach you basic color keying in Adobe After Effects. And in this tutorial, I'm going to cover some of the most basic things that you need to know about color keying in this software as well as a few helpful tricks. You're going to learn how to remove any green screen background from a video with ease using Keylight 1.2. So the first thing you want to do in Adobe After Effects, obviously, is to go to File, New, uh, Project. And that way, you're going to get access to your project folder. Now, in my other tutorial, I'm going to show you uh, how to actually import files properly so that you can get your project started. You can actually just drag and drop them from your uh, Window Explorer or your Finder if you're using a Mac. Inside of your project files, you're going to find some royalty-free footage uh, that I got from videos.pexels.com. Uh, it's one where people are working in the background, and there's another one where a blonde woman is upset in front of what will need a green screen. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is take this blurry video of people working, .mp4, and drag it right down here onto the new composition button. That should take us into a brand new comp. Uh, which is going to show this blurry video of people working inside of the composition window here. And if we just kind of roll through the timeline, we'll see that it's a very basic video that's blurry on purpose of people working. They're just sitting there in the background pretending like they're uh, working on something. And uh, right now I'm just going to um, drag in this video, blonde woman upset for .mp4 and I'm just gonna drag it right down into the timeline here right above the blurry uh, video of people working come, or layer I should say so you see that she's larger than the frame itself uh, what we can do to fix that is hit S to bring scale uh, or you could just hit this little drop down arrow right here hit the drop down arrow on transform and go down to scale as well but I don't like all this stuff being in my way so if you use hotkeys like S as in scale, it'll just bring up that one uh, parameter with these different values. Uh, so I'm just going to scale her down a little bit until I've got her enough in the, uh, the video. Uh, if you want her to be her video to be exactly the same size as this window, we could just right click on this, transform, and then fit to comp. And she fits right in there. The next thing we're going to do is go up to Effect and Keying, and then we're going to go down to Keylight 1.2, and from here we have the Effects window that we're looking inside of, or the Effects panel that we're looking inside of there, where it has Keylight 1.2, which is the effect that we're using, and then it has all of the controls down here some of them with their own little drop down windows of extra things that you can do to fine tune the keying. So right now we have screen color which is the one that we're going to use and then we have what's called an eyedropper. Now an eyedropper is going to sample the color that you click on inside of the composition window and then it's going to act on that to extract it from this background. This is very a very powerful tool to use when it comes to keying anything out of a background. So using the eyedropper tool here inside of this effect, I'm just going to click on you know, the green area. And voila, it's already gone. But we're not quite done yet. There are still some areas that could use some fine tuning. You, you might not be able to see it from this video, but there's still some uh, digital artifacts here, some grubby areas where the green screen is actually still present a little bit and you don't really want that. Uh, so then you have some other options like screen gain and screen balance where, that you can dial up to kind of get rid of that a little bit but then you gotta pay attention because you actually start to get rid of uh, some parts of her which is bad. And I'm actually gonna reduce this down to half so that it goes a little bit faster. You can do that on your computer as well inside the composition window. Go down here, change the resolution uh, from full to half and your workflow might go a little bit faster. We're just going to adjust things like the screen balance as well. Uh, turn my screen gain up to you know, maybe 120. Screen balance is at 27 right now. I'm just going to take a look 
Uh, if you're using a Windows computer, you can hit the space bar or zero. On a Mac, I believe it's control zero or space bar, but uh, space bar will make, make it work still. And this is just doing a full RAM preview. It's just going to go through. You'll see this green bar here loading up as it's uh, passing along the timeline so that it can play it in real time back to you. And what we're looking for right now is just to see if there are any of those little artifacts that are happening in the background here from the green screen that might still be left over. Those undesirable little grubby looking areas uh, that tend to get left over after a little bit. And right now it looks like it's okay. You also might want to check your monitor settings to see if it's bright enough uh, or not. I don't know if your monitor sucks like one of mine. Uh, but okay, I think I see a little bit of flickering happening from what might still be the green screen uh, showing up in the background there. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of noise. Um, so we can also go down to screen map. Uh, but first, you might want to change the view here from final result to uh, screen map. And that way you'll be able to really fine tune your mat to see what's missing, what's not, what area's clean, what's not. Uh, and you can see that there's still a little bit of, uh, you know, garbage <laughs> around in this area inside of the mat. So what we can do is go to clip black. That might get rid of some of our hair a little bit, make it a little bit more clean on the outside. And then we can just clip white to the left. So I, I put clip black to five clip white to 81. You can change the values easily by clicking and sliding these. And if you really want to fine tune how these go, if they're moving too fast, you can hold control or if you're using a Mac command uh, and slide these for a lot more finer tuning for the values that you're trying to set it to. And really the goal here is to get the subject area as white as possible and everything else a full black and that's how you'll know you have a really clean mat M-A-T-T-E you can name your kids that uh, then we can just go back to final result and now she's looking a lot cleaner against her background a little bit there's still a little bit of noise there but what we can do to fix that is maybe even duplicate her layer uh, but then again it might just be how the video was shot we'll see we can toggle this transparency on the transparency grid on by clicking this button and then we can turn the layer off underneath her and see how she fares against that background there and honestly for a start this is not bad we're going to turn the transparency back off and I'm just going to turn this layer underneath her back on and voila she's back center stage here the other thing that we could do, because her layer does not last past this point, she's going to disappear. And people usually freak out when that happens, when they're uh, editing in After Effects, when they're just starting out. So what we can do is take this work area bar and just click this blue tip on it and drag it about to the end of her video, or just a little bit before it. You can also hit the letter N as in no and that'll adjust where that work bar or the workspace uh, actually ends. Uh, B is for determining where it actually begins. Just hit B right there if I wanted to start it from there, but what this does is that's going to determine the space that it's actually going to generate a full RAM preview for when you hit the space bar or control zero to uh, start playing that through so that you can see it in real time. and it looks like we actually got it looks like she's pretty clean against that background uh, it looks like she's there but then again we could take some extra measures when it comes to balancing that which I think I'm going to save for another tutorial uh, when it comes to matching that kind of thing because I want to keep this one pretty short uh, but really quick I'll I'll do it in a sort of speed play to, to show you in case you want to learn right here anyway that's pretty much it for this tutorial that is how to 
key out a green screen or even a blue screen background of a video. If it was a blue screen and they filmed her against it, it would be pretty bad for us because her shirt is already blue. So this area would end up getting extracted with the blue screen in the background, which is why if you're going to shoot with a green or a blue screen, it's very important to pay attention to what your subject or your actor is wearing during the shoot because you could end up having a bad time. Are there ways that you could color correct the shirt? Absolutely. Do you feel like doing that? Probably not. Once again, my name is Brandon Hadnot, and you just got done watching one of my tutorials on how to perform a basic color key in Adobe After Effects using Q Light 1.2. I'll see you around next time.